Let's go ahead and do another example where we fill in the curves. Remember, these are sinusoidal curves in parameter space. So let's say I have an image um, with five points in it uh, at each of the corners. And this is a 100 by 100 image. So take point number one in the upper left. So point number one, since it's sitting right on top of the origin, um, all the points that pass through it have a row of zero. So let me draw that in red here. So row equals zero and any value of theta, it's going to have a line in parameter space that looks like this. Let's take point number two. I'll use different color uh, green. So let's look at a couple lines that pass through this. One is the vertical line like that. That has a, um, a row that um, has an angle of 0 degrees and a length of 100. OK, so I didn't mark on the parameter space what those angles are. But the limit, the maximum angle that we're looking at is, um, is plus 89 degrees here. And the minimum is minus 90. And the minimum row would be. Um, negative uh, the diagonal in this case it's a hundred times square root of 2 which is about a uh, minus 144 and the maximum would be plus that which would be uh, positive 144 okay so the perpendicular distance um, to this vertical line would be a hundred and so that would put me about right here that point right there Okay, the horizontal line through point number two, which looks like that, has a row of zero, and the angle would be um, 90, plus 90 or minus 90. So we, were, we would be looking at this. So this um, point through point number two generates a curve that looks like that. Let's take point number four. blue. So let's look at the horizontal line through point number four. It's going to have an angle of minus 90 and a distance of 100. So that would put us about here. Or um, we could have the um, vertical line passing through that would have a row of zero and an angle of zero. That would be there. And we can also think of the horizontal line as um, having an angle of plus 90 and a row of minus 100. So that would be about there. So this guy has a curve that looks like that. Um, so anyway, um, we have, we could look for intersections now of these points. So I'd have, looks like I have two intersections of points. Let's get uh, a little yellow. So one is this point right here, which has a theta of zero and a row of zero. And that's the intersection of point number one with point number four. So it's that, uh, it's that vertical line. Another one is, is this here, which is the intersection of point number two and point number four. So it corresponds to this diagonal line, which has a row of um, an angle of, of 45 degrees and a distance of oh, about um, half of 144, which would be about 72. So that's that point right there. OK, so here's uh, a actual Huff transform for a real image. This is the input image. We now take an edge detection of this to get a bunch of edge points. For each edge point in this image, we fill up the Huff space, which is shown here. So these are a lot of those sinusoidal lines all laid on top of each other. And then we can look for peaks in this. Um, the largest peaks, I think, are these 
points along the uh, first and last columns, which would correspond to those vertical lines. And so um, those are the lines in the image that were detected by those peaks, uh, which correspond like, to this, this runway here, this long runway. So the, uh, to implement the Huff transform um, is a bunch of nested for loops. So we scan through the image, namely we go through all X and all Y pixels and test to see if there is an edge point at that pixel. We next loop through one of the parameters, say theta, and compute the value of the other parameter rho from that equation of the line. Then we visit the cell corresponding to theta and rho and increment uh, that cell by one. So we vote for that cell. And, uh, and that's essentially it. So very simple code, but um, the, the disadvantage is these nested for loops. Um, and the problem is if you have a curve that has more than two parameters, uh, for example, a circle would have location xy plus radius r, um, then that requires another for loop. So it tends to get expensive, especially for uh, curves with many parameters. So let's run this code here. I'll go through this MATLAB code. So we start with an edge image E. This is a binary image. Compute the maximum distance, which is the diagonal distance. This um, creates an array of theta values from minus 90 to plus 89. And this creates an array of row values from whatever this maximum distance minus to the positive. This initializes the array, the parameter array to zero. This scans through the image point by point looking for non-zero edge points. If we find one, we scan through th values of theta. And note here that um, theta is an array um, of actual degree values. So um, theta, oops, let me get a different color. Theta is actually an array that looks like minus 90, uh, minus 89, 0 to plus 89. So um, instead of um, starting from minus 90 and going to plus 89, we're going to just go through the index. So the first index is 1, the next one 2 and then all the way up to, I believe this is uh, 180. So that's what this, um, this I theta is, is that index. So given a value of I theta, we can compute, we can retrieve the value of theta corresponding to that. So for example, if, um, if, the, if the index was a one, then the corresponding value of theta would be a minus 90. Then we use that value of theta to compute the distance rho and now we have to figure out which cell in the parameter space uh, that value of theta and rho corresponds to. So we know what value of the index, we already have the index i theta, but to get the index for rho, what we do is we scan through the rho, we, we get the rho uh, values which range from, oh, something like, let's say minus 144, minus 143, up to, uh, let's say, plus 144. So we subtract the actual row that we have. Let's say we have a row of um, 143. So if we subtract row minus our distance, we get, um, let's see, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, all the way up to, um, Oh, this would be something like 287. So that's what this um, this row minus dist does. It produces an array like that. Whoops. So now we we look for the minimum um, of that distance. So in this case, it would be a zero here, and we retrieve the index corresponding to that called i row. So that gives us our indices for rho and theta, and we can use that to increment 
or H array here. Let me go ahead and run this uh, on an image. Okay, so here's an image that has some lines. Um, it's color, so I'm going to first convert it to grayscale because the canny operator um, only works on grayscale images. Okay, so that is our edge image corresponding to that input image. Now I'll run this code here. I'll just take a second to run, a couple seconds to run here. Okay, so that produced a Huff Array H which I'll show here. So the horizontal axis is the angle from minus 90 to plus 89, and the vertical is the row values from minus row min or minus distance max to plus distance max. Um, let's see, so that we can see this better, let me change the contrast. So you can see these uh, sinusoidal um, curves in the array space here. So at this point we could look for maxima peaks in this space and those would be corresponding to the lines. So a um, couple useful MATLAB functions. There actually is a Huff transform function called Huff. So you pass in the input binary edge points and it returns the Huff array which is using the code that I did earlier and the uh, the vectors for theta and rho that I had earlier. Huff peaks um, goes and extracts peaks from the Huff space and you specify how many peaks you want here and it returns the highest peaks that it finds up to num peaks and then um, it will also compute the uh, lines through the peaks corresponding to those peaks in the form of a uh, endpoint 1, endpoint 2, so that you can go ahead and draw lines in the image. So um, here is that image that I showed earlier using the MATLAB function huff, uh, huff peaks and huff lines. And here is the code that draws lines through them. One thing that huff lines does though is uh, a little bit more involved is it actually gives you line segments. So the Huff transform actually just computes infinite lines, you know, with no endpoints. But the Huff lines goes back to the edge image and it looks to see along that line where the edge points actually are. And so um, it, will, it will give you the um, starting and ending uh, endpoints of the line corresponding to the actual edge points.